So I said, uh, this is an address. 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 This house has an address. This might be 1508. This might be 1510, some street, whatever, right? So that's what this is representing. Just some made up address that I come up with, right? I just say X100. Uh, and if I'm doing integers and I deduct for X96, right? So, so that's, that's what that means, okay? Uh, does that answer your question? Okay, okay. So uh, let's continue with functions. We're still like dealing with uh, function concepts, and I go here, and let me uh, go here. So, so we talked about value parameters. We talked about reference parameters. So now let's. Uh, we also talked about variable scope, but I'm still going to cover it to make sure that that we understand what that is. Okay. So let me go there. And let me bring up some code. So scope is um, how long a variable lives, right? And what part of code is it accessible or is it alive, right? So let me let me go to the code space and then I'll create an example. And scope for functions applies to uh, looping or conditional statements too, okay? So the same concepts apply. So if you know the scope for functions, how they work, then you'll know how the other ones work too. Okay, so let me go ahead and close all, and then I'm going CMake, SRC, examples, and we are still with functions. <clears throat> and I guess I can pick uh, any one. So we were here. I guess I'll just leave them all in the same file. That way you don't have to be jumping around and find stuff. Okay, so... Okay, so notice where I'm declaring this uh, variable, like it's not within any of the functions and it's in a header file. What I mean, it's not in any of the functions, like I'm not creating it in this block or in this block or in this block. So it's, it's outside the scope of uh, functions. So then uh, this one is a global variable, um, which are evil, right? <laughs> because uh, the, they can get you in trouble, right? So the guideline is like create variables like as close as possible to the region of code where you are using them, right? So if you have a function that has like 10 lines of code, then maybe that's okay to create at the top. But if you're dealing with like a, with like a function that maybe has like 15 lines of code, then try to create, to create the variable like one line before you use it. So that uh, you know, like this variable belongs to these two, three lines. The issue with a global variable is that it can be accessed in any in any function, and this one is uh, read write. So maybe like number doesn't make sense, but if 
if this was like, for example, the federal tax rate, right? And we know that uh, for the most part, uh, they seldom change and we can make this one double like federal tax rate, whatever, whatever that is, right? Like I'll just put like 10%, uh, whatever. And this one can be accessed in any function. So if we uh, go here, access a global variable. Okay, let me mute that person, okay. Okay, so we go here, and and then we're like, okay, can can I access the federal tax rate? I'm just gonna try to change it. Let's try to uh, build. So I'm able to access it. And I can have other functions, like I can access it in this function too, or in this one, or in this one. Um, that's okay. Like The issue here is that it's global, meaning it can be accessed by any function uh, that's accessible, uh, to, or any, very, any function in these two pages have uh, access to federal tax rate, which is a big scope, right? Like <laughs> It's global. That's why we say global scope. So is is that bad? Well, in this case, the only reason it's bad is because it's read write, okay? Meaning like I can accidentally change it, like maybe I didn't mean to do this and then I would uh, other code that uses it, right? But then by now, like I've messed up the federal tax rate. So that's that's how uh, global variables can get us in trouble. And and they're very hard to use in, in uh, test uh, cases unless we know this one seldom changes so we can say hey like make this one constant meaning uh, don't let the value of 0.1 be changed so notice once I do that right away like I get a warning here like must be modifiable uh, value L value I'll explain what that is uh, later Basically means it must be a, a variable that can be uh, changed, and in this case, it's not. So, so if we are going to use global, so if we have to, then please remember to use uh, const that is uh, your friend. Can't modify if it's cons right so meaning uh, read only we can read the value but we can't change the value so that's global variable and just to see show you that we can access it in other functions right like, notice here like we can we can access it uh, here like if we create it like uh, a local variable this variable is a function local variable meaning it's only available uh, in this scope here like assuming we had more code so then this variable would only be available to use in in this lines okay so that's a uh, function local variable and uh, <clears throat> the, the key here is like if you create a variable in a function you cannot read it outside the function, meaning we can't uh, we can't say like uh, rate equals something. I'm just making it up. But notice, like we have that red underscore uh, has no storage or class type. In other words, it's kind of like um, I mean, like to our eyes, it's like yeah, I mean, it's right here. I want to use it. The issue is that remember. How functions work. This one's going to get loaded onto memory, and while it's in memory, this variable exists, but only accessible in this scope here. And once it's out of memory, then it doesn't exist anymore. So that's why, like the 
code checkers telling us like, hey, wait a minute, like uh, whatever you're trying to do, it's not gonna work, okay? So please remember that. And we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot and say int rate equals 10, but that's a different variable, right? And in essence, we've created another global variable. So I just want to make sure that you understand, okay, like variables live within the function if that's where you create them. If you create them global, they're accessible to any, any functions, right? So, and the key here to see is that variables can go into a function, right? Like notice here, like federal tax rate, I didn't pass it as a function argument or parameter, but it's accessible to my function, meaning variables can come into a function from the outside without being a parameter if it's a, or if they are global variables. Okay, let me eliminate this. I don't want to do that. Well, that was just to, to show you a question so far here. <clears throat> okay, and while I'm here, uh, access uh, global variable, uh, like if I have a statement, right, I'm just going to make a simple one. then federal tax rate can be read in that statement, right? Because remember the rule is, and, and remember what I said, whatever applies to functions as far as like how variables work and global variables applies to conditional statements and to loops. This is a global variable, so we can read it in the if statement. But if I create, um, I'm just creating that, right? And then I'm like, notice it only lives in the scope of the if statement. Okay, so obviously the key here is if you want it to be using some variable created outside, this is a local function variable. It's in the scope of the function, but so is the if statement, so then here uh, we could say rate equals some other number, right? I'm just making numbers up. And notice down here, then I can access it. Why? Because variables can come in to a scope, but not create it in the scope and then go up to a higher level or higher precedent scope. So please remember that it'll save you time when you are working on assignments. Questions here so far? Same holds for the switch statement, the while, and the for loop, okay? This is the same concept as far as like uh, scope. Uh, okay, no questions. Okay, so let me commit this piece here. Pretty sure they covered this in Python, but I still want to make sure that you understand that it's still the same here. It'll be the same for most programming languages. Okay, so let me stop and start.